This is one of the hardest defenses to hit a one-play touchdown against in the game, and all you have to do is slant a receiver, and you can see how this guy gets wide open over the top once you bullet and pass it away from the safety for another easy one-play touchdown. And you can see once again, this is another play where there's two different options open. I can bullet and pass it away from the safety to get this guy open for a one-play touchdown, or I can wait for the much easier one, which is going to be the bullet and pass it away in this direction. Not a lot of one-play touchdowns for tight ends, but you can see once this guy crosses the center of the field here, there's nobody at coverage. As he has about 5 to 10 yards of easy catch and run space for another one-play touchdown against any defense. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff at the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown of what was probably my favorite offense in Madden 24, and what was probably my favorite offense in Madden 23, as the game hadn't really changed too much. But they did patch a lot of stuff that I used to put out in Madden 23 from this offense, the gun stack wide flex. The formation has um, had a really glitchy play in the fade out. They patched that. They patched a lot of other stuff. So I really want to do an updated version of some of the newer stuff I found because I, to, I used to use this formation out of the Saints playbook. But now that I'm in an online CFM with 32 subscribers, which is something that I'm, I'm pushing out a lot of content from, a lot of gameplays from, I really find myself going back to this offense because in the past, I really just wanted to find whatever's new and whatever's, um, you know, something new for you guys because I think that's why a lot of people watch my channel. But now that I'm playing against the same people all the time, I want to start off with the best stuff. And the two offenses that I'm using the most are the I from close, which to me is the best running formation in the game, or at least off meta running formation. I'm not sure what the best running formation really is. And to me, the best passing formation, or at least once again, the best off meta passing formation would be the gun stack Y flex. Because this here, the stack itself is one of the glitchiest things in the game, but I also have a lot of one-play touchdowns that I never put out previously from the fade out, which will score from the other side, from the two-receiver side on the other side. So I got a lot of new plays for you guys, but I am also going to go over some of the um, you know the plays that I've gone over in the past because there are a lot of things that didn't change as well. But before I do, if you guys want to see more breakdowns like this, as always, please be sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. If you guys want to see more money plays, I made a full 500-page custom offer offense and defense if you guys want to check that out you can download those instantly or any of my ebooks simply click the links in the description or the top end comment for my substitutions you just want to make sure you have your fastest receiver here because this is going to be where the majority of the one play touchdowns and big plays come from but there's also going to be opportunities for this receiver and even for this receiver so you really want to make sure you just have your best three on the field for my audible plays you always want to have at least one run play i use the inside zone but i'm also going to show you guys the quick base which is a very good play but those would be my two options and then for my pass plays i have the drive age wheel which is a one play touchdown against a lot of different man coverages including cover two zone and cover three zone the pa re which is pretty much a one play touchdown against just about everything and the fade out which is like i said it's going to be a, a one play touchdown against a lot of different defenses from the other side away from the stack where most of the one play touchdowns come from the stack like the drive h wheel and the pa read this is going to give you some options to the other side of the field which is going to be very hard for your opponent to, to key in on and then my fifth play is typically going to be a dink and dunk play called the y sale which i'll go over a little bit later but let's go and let's start off with the run play starting off with the inside zone the way this formation spreads the defense you'll notice a lot of times there'll only be five defenders in the box and since you have five linemen you can run the ball at any time anytime that you see a light box like this you should be able to get a little bit you know i try to take it outside there but you should be able to get a good five to ten yard run i'm going to do it one more time because this is a very consistent run as long as that double team peels off a little bit better you can see how they're double teaming the nose and then they're trying to peel off to that second level if they get to that second level then you'll have that opportunity the first two places didn't do that but you can see the third play got 15 yards so this is just something to keep your opponent honest but you do have some options as far as what you can do to dress this play up if you want to get let's say they have six in the box you can always motion in the tight end but in this look you can see how the tight end actually keeps the uh the defender out wide which is one of the reasons that this formation is so good because it's it splits that guy out another thing you can do when i run the ball i do it quite a bit anyway is motion in this receiver because i'm going to be doing that a lot in some of the pass plays especially the fade out so i find it's best to do that in a run play so that your opponent doesn't key in on it later but you can see how this is just a very consistent run play to keep your opponent honest otherwise you also have the halfback quick base which is something a lot of pro players like to run 
run. And this is just a good play because you have a pulling leading guard as your blocker. So go on and pick that. Same same set of applies if you use this play instead. Sometimes you're going to want to motion this guy in. Sometimes we're motioning the tight end. Here we don't really have an advantage. We actually have a disadvantage. So this would be one of the, the, the times where I would motion this guy in because now i got six blockers on six guys. But I'm going to be following this pulling blocker anyway. As you can see right there, if they're playing aggressive, anytime you have pulling blockers, if it's a blitz, if the linebackers or safeties are blitzing and they're playing aggressive like that, they're typically going to blow it up. You really want to run a play like this when pulling blockers blockers against a more passive zone coverage because they, they won't blow up the, the lanes the same way you do on the first play. So I'm actually kind of glad that happened. Like I said, right, you see he's sitting back waiting on it. If they're sitting back waiting on it, that's when you're going to have the most success with a pulling play. But if they're aggressive and they're shooting gaps, they're blitzing, it's not going to work out that way. So this is a very good play, but like I said, it's best against zone. So that was quick. I don't have a lot of room plays to go over in this formation because I'm in the shotgun. But I will go over some dink and dunk pass plays next because a lot of these pass plays are really extensions of the run game, like the Y sale or like the, um, the drive H wheel, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. The Y sale has a running back play that I typically use against zone coverages. But let's go and let's pick that. We're going to go random here. This play here, I've, I've mentioned this in another formation recently where you really have to just split the field in half. The two receivers on the stack side are both going to be man beaters where the receivers on the right side are typically zone beaters. The B route just really pulls back the coverage. But if I think it's a zone, I'm going to watch the running back right out the gate. And then you can see right here, it wasn't. It was a man. So I know I have to go to the sale, which is what the tight end's running. Because that's going to be a man and a zone beater. So even if I make the wrong read, because you can't always make the right read with these formations. This definitely looks like a cover two, by the way. If I know it's a cover two, like I said, this running back here is usually going to be open underneath for a catch and run. Probably got to hold it a little bit longer than I did there. Uh, and that's basically because the sail route also pulls things back. Now, this looks like an obvious man zero, so I don't really have to worry about it here. I'll go straight to my man side, and you can see that we have um, you know an easy catch and run on, this, on the zig. You also have the in route, which beats man coverage. But the in route also beats zone, so let's see if we get a zone coverage here because, like I said, he will open when he gets over the middle there, although I threw it you know, maybe under pressure, kind of messed it up. But that's pretty much your read structure. The, the X route will get open against anything, just like the A route will get open against anything. So I'll typically start, if it's a zone, I'll typically start with the running back. I'll watch that. Try not to be a man coverage once again. So I got to go up to the tight end. But if that's not there, I can also go to the uh, the in route on the other side. So that'd be like the read structure there. As pretty much every route here gets open against just about anything, with the exception of the running back doesn't beat man and the zig doesn't beat zone very well. And that's pretty much it for the dink and dunk plays with the exception of another play, which is basically the exact same in the halfback slip screen. I don't really like screen plays too much because I feel like a lot of times they might get blown up by, you know, the lineman will either get in the, uh, you know, the way or sometimes the running back won't get out, he won't pull out. There's a lot of things that can happen. A, a user could be on top of it. So I don't really like running screen plays unless they have other options. And that's the thing I like about this play is you have other options. Is you have the sale, which can still get open in the timer required between the screen and the pulling lineman and you also have the Y receiver which is going to get open against a lot of zone coverage is the only thing you got to really worry about is throwing off your back foot and getting a bad accuracy but you do have a couple of options we're going to try to hit that zig one more time as you can see you know that's the the, the big issue is is just the the off the you know the back foot throw which I think only Mahomes has the ability to make that uh, that consistently but if you step in the throw and you you know you, you, you get it out quick you can still have a lot of other options this play is not just about the screen play which is one of the things I like about it as you see right here once again the lineman is kind of in the way you know it's a good play it's obviously the, the go-to but if it's not there you do have several other options making this a very good addition to the offense but that's pretty much it for the dink and dunk plays everything else is going to have at least one one play touchdown included in it uh the best dink and dunk play in the entire formation though in my opinion is the drive h wheel i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna pick that i'm gonna go coverage to coverage though and show you what beats what starting with tampa 2. for tampa 2 you can use the wheel route which is going to be a very good uh, option if I put the A route on streak and then I put the B receiver on, you know, just something short like an out route or something like that as AJ Brown's messing everything up. And you'll notice that this play can work and be a big play when he turns up field, but uh, it takes a little bit long. As you can see right there, it's kind of an elongated route, which is why I didn't get the ball out in time. I find if you're going to use that concept, it's best just to use, just to augment it to a regular wheel route. And you'll notice that you get the exact same effect. Only this time, it's just going to get the field a little bit quicker and I don't have to hold the ball so long. So that's just something you can do either way. As you can see, I dotted up on the corner there and get a big play. You're going to want to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, though, if you do that, because obviously you're going to want more space to the sideline. But you can have the same effect simply by streaking the X receiver on the other side. And now you'll see, just as long as they don't get you know too jammed up, you can get the Y receiver to be a big play which, you know, a potential catch and run won't play touchdown depending on how quickly it gets open. But at the end of the day, both of these are just very big routes against cover two. Also has a lot of success against cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that. 
Against cover two man, you can have the same success on the corner route side simply by putting the X receiver on a streak. And it really depends on how much he gets bumped around once again. As you can see, you have an opportunity once again for a catch and run one play touchdown if you have a fast enough receiver here, which obviously Devontae Smith is not. But you could also work the running back side once again. Once again, working from the open side of the field, where all you got to do is motion out this running back. Only this time, you don't want to put him on a augmented wheel route because the elongated wheel route is what's going to get him open based on the fact that the the defender tries to drop down and press and that really just runs right around the press as we got another 40 to you know 50 yard plus play and if we watch the replay you can see once again he's coming down to press that's why this works he's just going to run right around it and get a free release up the field to the point where when he turns upfield he's just getting a very big play this play also has a lot of success against man cover one so let's go and let's pick that against cover one the streaking side with the corner route is going to have success once again but the running back is going to be a very big play as well as I don't really have to make any adjustments other than streaking the X route to pull the um, the safety in that direction. And you can see how all the routes clear over here. And once this guy turns up the field once again, he's just got another catch and run with no real, um, you know, nothing really in the way. If you run a short side like this once again, you're going to see that he flattens out. But when he turns up field, he doesn't flip his hips well enough. And that's why this guy just gets burnt for an easy catch and run one play touchdown once again. We could also work the streak as well if I motion out the running back and put him and basically everybody on streaks except for the corner route as these three receivers will get the safety's attention to pull him over while the stack will basically uh, make the cornerbacks bump into one each other and give you an opportunity to bullet and pass lead up the field for an easy one play touchdown against cover one. The way this play works is both of these receivers will basically get open because of the stack being so close. These two cornerbacks are going to bump into one another and basically keep each other from covering anybody. As I could throw to Devontae Smith right there as he gets wide open to the sideline, but that'll probably just be a big catch where I can actually get a one play touchdown if I just wait and throw it inside to Quez Watkins, just as long as I don't throw it too close to the safeties, we get another one play touchdown. But this setup also works against cover three, which isn't something that worked in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. And I can hit a one play touchdown against this the exact same way by motioning out the running back and putting everybody on streaks except for the corner out. And it'll have the exact same setup and the exact same results. Just make sure you're on a hash mark like I am. And you'll see how this X receiver, once again, has a huge lane right between the safety and the cornerback for another easy one play touchdown against cover three. Same setup, same results. This corner route will pull the cornerback outside while the three receivers streaking on that side will hold that safety in place. And that's just a bullet and pass lead right up the center for one of the easiest one-play touchdowns you're going to see against cover three. This play is probably best against cover zero, though, so let's go and let's pick that. As there's multiple routes here that beat cover zero, but the running back is really probably the best as far as a dink and dunk because it's typically going to be wide open. It's typically the, the user will forget to cover it. It won't be manned properly. So I always hit that. But if you put the X route on a streak once again, You'll have a much better play to that. As you can see, all I really need to do is bullet and pass lead inside. And a lot of times, the cornerback will get in one each other's way, the same way they did against cover one man. <clears throat> if you really want to do the full setup, though, put the running back on a check and release. And this will help to, uh, to help with the blocking a little bit more. As like I said, it's really just about the angle. As, as long as you throw it inside like that, the cornerback's never really going to be able to keep up. There's a lot of good dink and dunk with this play as well. So let's go and let's pick that. We'll pick random on defense. The running back really gets open against just about anything. Man or zone, just throw it right away and always run to the open side of the field. You also have really good check downs over the middle with the drag and the uh, the 10 yard in route, which is what the tight end's running. Is one of those are always gonna get open for uh, a good check down as well. And if you have a uh, cover three or cover four or you know anything where the cornerback drops back, you can just steal this speed out route all game too, which you can see is a good catch and run as I get about 12 there. And last but not least, if you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field against pretty much any zone coverage, all you got to do is put the X route on a streak, but it has to be a zone. This looks like a man, so it's not necessarily going to work. But you can see it still kind of did because the, the cornerbacks get in each other's way. So that's something you can do against any zone coverage. I already showed how it works against cover two. This looks like a zone coverage. This will probably work a lot better, although that looked like it was a cover four quarters, cover four match. Matching principles it doesn't necessarily work, but straight up zone coverage is like regular cover three and cover four. It will, as it looks like we have another matching, or maybe not. That might have been a cover three, as you can see once again, I could dot that up outside. But cover two, cover three, cover four, regular, uh, that'll have a lot of success. And you have a lot of really good dink and dunk 
checkdowns on this play. Now, I just showed you a cover through one play touchdown, so I'm also going to show you one out of the Z spot, but it's very similar. I am going to pick random first, though, because there actually is a pretty good... Actually, I'll just pick cover three, because there's a couple different cover three concepts here. This play has a lot of similarities to the drive H wheel, as it has a similar one play touchdown, but you can also use the hash marks blitz that I just showed you on the weak side here by putting the B receiver on a streak and then also putting the RB receiver on an out route. And this is going to basically give you a high low concept but the streaking b receiver will pull back the cornerback to the point where against zone any zone once again the tight end should get open and you can even go as far as to motion him in which is something i'm going to do quite a bit so this here will help out to get that tight end open even more as you can see it's just you know i'm just dotting it up on the sideline once again so very good play and then the running back underneath should get open it's just about anything as well so that's one good setup but you also have a one play touchdown the same way I find that this one might be a little bit better than the uh, the drive H wheel, but to save an inventory slot in my audible plays, I'll use the drive H wheel. But I find that that you know that corner out there is just a better version, just as long as I have enough throwing time to, to get this ball off. As you can see right there, um, you know there there is pressure, which is, is obviously an issue. But this is still one of the quicker one play touchdowns against cover three. So let's go and let's do that one more time. Not too worried about the results because, like I said, I will be showing you this a lot in gameplays. And I already have, actually. I think I showed that in yesterday's gameplay. But you can see here, once again, the pressure gets right through because we've got Chris Jones. But he's wide open up the seam as we have an out-of-range bullet pass, which is total nonsense. But we'll do that one more time because, like I said, we do have to worry about Chris Jones blowing this up. And, you know, this is definitely a play worth showing because, to me, this is as wide as you're going to get when it comes to a cover three bomb, and it's also as fast as you're going to get. That's pretty much all that play does, though. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to a little bit more of an explosive one play touchdown from the same direction in the PA read. And this is a one play touchdown against everything. So we're going to go ahead and pick that on defense. We're going to start off with Tampa 2 one more time. Against cover two like this, if you run from a hash mark like I am to the short side of the field, I find that both the post route and the Y receiver can get open. If you get a good bullet and pass, as you can see right there, we can get over the top with that receiver or we get over the top with the post route. The post route obviously is gonna be a little bit easier, but it takes a little bit longer. As you can see right here, he has to cross the field. But once he does, once again, there's nothing really here stopping him. As we have a one play touchdown to both receivers. And you can see once again, this is another play where there's two different options open. I can bullet and pass it away from the safety to get this guy open for a one play touchdown, or I can wait for the much easier one, which is gonna be to bullet and pass it away in this direction. And you can see there's nobody to help out this safety in the middle. This play can also have a lot of success against cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that. We pick cover two on defense. Pretty much gonna be the exact same setup, only this time you're not really gonna have that fade unless you have a super fast receiver and you get a super glitchy uh, start to the play. But otherwise, you're just gonna have to throw to the uh, the crossing route once again, the post route. As you can see, it's just a very easy one play touchdown as well. This play also works against a lot of man coverage, so we'll pick cover one hole next. You got some pretty good man checkdowns as well with the zig and the comeback route on the other side. So those are good checkdowns against any man coverage, I just wanna mention. I would say the best way to run this is from a hash mark to the short side of the field, and I'll go ahead and I'll slam the B receiver because the uh, the crossing route that the Y receiver is running is just naturally a big play and since the other receiver is in a post already he's kind of pulling back the safety so that'll give you a really good catch and run opportunity but I also find that you can just straight up just put the post on a fade as that will really pull that safety back and give you just a little bit more catch and run space to the point where I should be able to um, you know get this one play touchdown a lot easier because he's getting pulled back a little bit more but you can see it's just it's close you're getting close but you can also throw the post if I want to throw to the post, I can do that, but I find the best way to do that would be to fade the Y route, motion out the running back, and motion him to the line. And this is going to do uh, its best job to try to pull that safety in that direction so that I can get to that post route that much faster. As you can see right here, now there's two receivers pulling him across. And since I'm running into the short side of the field, he's going to favor the open side of the field. So once again, you see the two receivers cross up the two cornerbacks, and this just allows Quez Watkins to just get wide open across the formation as the safety's nowhere to help, and we get another easy one-play touchdown. If you're going to do the wheel route, though, you can basically just leave it as is and motion the wheel route across. And that wheel route will have a lot of success to the open side of the field, just as long as you bullet and pass lead away once again. And now you got another one play touchdown against cover one man in the opposite direction. So that's pretty much it for that. It also beats cover zero. So let's go and let's pick that. Against cover zero, just check and release the running back so that the safety covering him doesn't drop back into coverage and then shorten the B receiver once again into a slant. And you'll notice how the Y receiver and the post route really are both big plays, but this one's gonna get open faster and be more consistent. So that would be my play for that. 
But you could also put the wide receiver on a fade and check and release the running back just to hold the safety that's man to him in coverage. And a lot of times you'll get a look where they cross up the man defenders once again. And the post route just gets wide open over the middle one more time for another easy catch on one play touchdown. So that's pretty much it for the man coverages. We'll do cover three sky next. For cover three, there's a couple different things you can do. But one of the best things to do is put the running back on a wheel and motion to the other side. Then just slant the Y receiver. And this should be enough to create a lane for the X receiver once he crosses the safety's face. Takes a little bit of time, but it's still a very reliable play. And a similar concept from this play works against cover four match as well. Against cover four, just fade the Y receiver, and you're gonna notice how it's gonna basically do the same thing it does against man coverage, as it's just gonna allow this guy to get inside release and have another big play against cover four match. This is also gonna be your best one play touchdown against cover four regular, so we'll have to back out and go to the dollar and find cover four drop contain. Cover four drop is one of the hardest plays that a one play touchdown against, but in this formation, all you gotta do is put the Y receiver on a slant and run from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am here. And you'll see how that X receiver once again gets over the top of the strong safety as long as you wait for him to get inside of the free safety and just bullet and pass it away. This is one of the hardest defenses to hit a one play touchdown against in the game and all you have to do is slant a receiver and you can see how this guy gets wide open over the top once you bullet and pass lead away from the safety for another easy one play touchdown. So that's it for all the one play touchdowns from that side of the field, but you might notice your opponent starts paying special attention to the stack if you bomb them too much. So that's why I've came up with a lot of alternate plays to use out of the fade out, as you're gonna get a lot of one play touchdowns from the other side of the field. So I'm gonna basically show you guys a bunch of concepts there, starting with cover two once again, although I have to back out and go back to nickel and we'll start off with Tampa two. Earlier I was saying in the run plays that you wanna make some fake motions from time to time and motion this guy in so that your opponent doesn't see the one play touchdowns coming. But all you really gotta do is put the A route on a fade and motion in that B route. And you'll see how this B receiver will get open inside of the safety and the other safety is really chasing the wheel route on the other side for another big play. But you can work that wheel route too if you wanna motion out the running back to the line of scrimmage and then put him on a streak and then just put the X route on a five yard out once again. And the Y receiver will be a big play as well outside, probably an even bigger play than I showed previously to plays like the drive H wheel. This play can have a lot of success against cover two man as well. So we're gonna pick that, do tamp or do cover two man. Pretty much the same setup, just motion in Brown and put the A receiver on a streak. And you'll notice how the streak will pull back the safety while the B receiver won't get jammed now that he's closer to the line of scrimmage, making it very easy for a catch and run one play touchdown as long as you don't get a goofy jumping catch animation. And now we create a stack on the other side so we can score the exact same way from both sides of the field as this guy doesn't get pressed or jammed and is going for another easy one play touchdown from the other side of the field. It's gonna have a lot of success against man coverages like cover one hole as well. This wheel route can have success against cover one when he turns up the field. You just have to bullet and pass lead inside away from the cornerback and you'll always have a path to the ball. But it won't necessarily be a catch and run one play touchdown. But I'll do it a couple times just to show you guys how consistent it is because once he turns up field, as long as you get it inside away, you're going to have space. And like I said, if you have a little bit of a speed advantage, you might be able to catch and run that for a big play. So we'll go and we'll try that one more time because like I said, it is very consistent. I just don't know if it's consistent enough to score. As you can see, we do finally get you know what I'll call a one play touchdown. But like I said, if I had Quez Watkins there, it'd probably be a touchdown. This play also has a lot of success against cover zero, so let's go and let's pick that. But this is another play where you can motion in the B route, put the tight end on a fade, and create a similar looking stack concept that the post route will get open with right away as long as you bullet and pass it inside the exact same way. And you can see how once again, this sets the exact same pick on the cornerback, just basically slowing him down enough that this receiver can get open across the center of the field for another easy one play touchdown. This play can also have success against cover three, so let's go and let's pick cover three sky. For cover three, there's a couple different options here. One of them is to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am already. Then put the X receiver on a comeback to hold the cornerback, the Y receiver on like a slant just for a check down. Motion the running back out and put him on a wheel. And you'll notice how this can really have a lot of success to the tight end. This is kind of a weird look that uh, works with the tight end pretty well. I also put the B receiver on a, um, on a uh, streak as well or a fade. And you can see how this guy can get open right up the seam on the opposite side of the field pretty quickly. This play also has a lot of success against things like cover for match. So let's go and let's pick that. 
For this play here, you just really want to put the deep safeties in conflict. Anytime you're against cover match, you really just need um, five deep routes to go over 10 yards. And since you only have four deep zone coverages, you usually create a lot of uh, issues. So I'm just going to motion the running back out and put him on a fade. And you'll see how that will draw priority while the tight end just gets left wide open in the middle of the field for an easy catch and run one play touchdown as long as you got a little bit of speed. Now, if I really want to create a lot of space, though, I just have to put the Y receiver on a slant so that they'll basically have nobody on that side of the field once the tight end comes free. And you can see how, once again, we just have another very easy catch on one play touchdown with basically anybody running this route. Not a lot of one play touchdowns for tight ends, but you can see once this guy crosses the center of the field here, there's nobody in coverage as he has about five to 10 yards easy catch and run space for another one play touchdown against any defense. And then last but not least, we have cover four regular as we have two plays in this formation that score against every single defense in the game. We'll go to the dollar and pick the cover four drop contain one more time. And against cover four, we have another one play touchdown to the A tight end. Well, all I have to do is put the X route on a comeback and the Y receiver on a drag and you'll see how the A tight end will get open. He's going to buy some time in the pocket, but the B route is going to pull back both safeties, allowing this guy to get open for an easy catch and run as long as I don't get that stupid jumping catching animation again. Let's go and let's do that one more time, though, because like I said, it's a very easy play. I said that post route will pull all the coverage, and that A receiver will have all the opportunity as we get another catch and run one play touchdown pretty easily to end the video. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see gameplay of this next week, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button and make sure to be a subscriber. Other than that, thanks for watching. Man, I should out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.